are no longer stuck in Vermont. We are here in Canada, in Quebec, in Magog. And today we are going to spend the afternoon with Eliza Smith Vetter, a Vermonter who has been stuck in Canada for the past two years. Basically moved to a new country, didn't understand anything about what that really meant and had to do it while going immediately into quarantine. Like I'm starting to lose track of how much time has passed. It's been so long. So I saw you on Facebook and you had posted an article that said stuck in Canada, essentially woman stuck in Canada. And I was like, bing. Do you want to go for a walk? Oh, hell yeah, ma. I wanna go. Four or five years ago, I met my wife. We started dating and she lived just outside of Montreal and I'm in Burlington. So we didn't seem like a big deal. Started dating a couple years later, got married. Kind of got married a little faster than maybe we would have because we knew we'd want to live together and immigration takes a long time. <laughs> Gotta see you get your outfit on. <laughs> we were kind of enjoying having a house in Burlington, a house outside of Montreal. Life was good. Um, and then uh, the border shut. <laughs> the second week of March, almost two years ago, and I got a call a day or two before it officially closed. She called me and said, um, you need to get up here. Went to Pet Food Warehouse, bought as much food as I could fit in the Subaru, threw the dog in the back seat. I think I had some knitting. I had one duffel bag of clothes. I was thinking, this could go into summer. I have a great condo in Vermont that is there with all my belongings in it. I mean, I can't move my things until I become a Canadian permanent resident. We are still waiting for my paperwork and in normal times, this would all be resolved. I can't go back and forth because of my visitor visa status. So I'm still here as a tourist. I'm on a tourist visa. Canada has been really generous in allowing me to stay and they understand that I'm working for an American company. So it's all legal and it's all okay. And I feel really lucky. A lot of couples, were truly separated. There's so many cross-border couples. We were super isolated at that point. The town we were in even had a police barrier around it and you couldn't cross, you couldn't go in and out of the town. My wife was working in the city. So I was kind of housebound and technically here to be with my wife, but alone in a very rural area where nobody speaks English or if they do, it scares them and they try not to. I'm not fluent in this dialect. <laughs> Powerless. Yeah. Pas beaucoup de pouvoir. C'est très dur. Très dur. Puis je peux pas rien faire. Je peux pas l'aider. Je peux juste être à côté d'elle, l'appuyer, mais c'est dur. C'est très dur. No, I always say I had the, like the bougiest expat or you know refugee experience you could possibly imagine. So don't get it twisted. I understand how like lucky and easy this was, but. But the sense of um, unrootedness, I think, is universal and is the thing that is so ineffable and the thing that really, it made me so empathetic for people who have to do this in more dire circumstances with less resources. That is my pile of mail. Oh my God. I've only gotten mail twice since I've been here. It looks like somebody stole my identity and tried to apply for unemployment in the state of Vermont. So when I say that the house is pretty bare because we just moved in, like we don't have curtains anywhere. And I found that pillow, I bought it, trying to convince myself. <laughs> as much as I, I talk smack about Marie Kondo, like she would love this place. Like, I've been forced into her world and I don't love it. Like this, like I'm waiting for my niece and nephew to come visit. Yes, I want stuff. I want my nephew here, like making a mess. That's really the thing about this stuff. We're all stuck without our people. The further you are from your people, the longer it's been, the more you rely on your memories. And like, that's what, that's what I really struggle with. We did end up deciding this last year to um, sell that house because it was in such a remote area and move somewhere with some outdoor activities. God, it's like a picture book out there. So now we live in Magog, which is just Burlington, but tiny in French. See the Lake Monster themed soccer That's team? Memphis. Memphis. It's like champ. <laughs> Too obvious. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> I visited Liza's former office in Colchester, Vermont. She hasn't worked there in two years. And actually, she changed jobs. Six months ago, she stopped working here. But all her stuff is still here. We all thought it was gonna be like, oh, you know, we, yeah, you'll be back in June. Oh my. Well, there is quite a bit of food in here. The 12 pack of Guinness that's left over from a St. Patrick's Day potluck that we're gonna have at work that didn't happen. <laughs> 
just love that her office is still Like here. the hockey puck. Her hockey puck is still in the same spot. So many people's lives have changed because of borders and like being stuck places. And yeah. For a perfectionist like me, it's even harder because I can do anything. I can help her. I can do nothing. Oh my God, if I could go back in time and pack a blanket and a pillow. <laughs> I miss all the sentimental stuff. You don't realize how deeply you love your home or how much you love Vermont <laughs> until you can't get to it. I now think like my blood runs pretty green and I miss it. I'm so happy for the UVM girls hockey team. Like they are doing incredible things this year. I can't believe I'm missing it, but we don't have children. So we can go through all of this. We don't have kids. Yeah, her kid. Let's live every day like we're on the best trip of our life. Like you're with your wife, you're happy, you love this place. Like it's this good in the middle of all this. What will it be like when we can do things like go on a date again? <laughs> we feel really lucky. We feel really grateful. If you have to be stuck anywhere, you want to be stuck with your spouse. And if you have to be stuck in Canada, being stuck in and around Montreal and the Eastern Townships is a great place to be stuck. This is why I'm here. This is it. This is it. Exactly. I haven't been in Canada in two years. I miss you, Canada. And we will get stuck in Vermont with you again real soon. And I keep saying to people, like, this is my appeal. Please come see us on the shores of a cute tiny lake. We have our own lake monster. We have outdoor skating. If you like Burlington, but you're sick of it, come here to the smaller Burlington where you can stay with me for free.